Nearly a month ago, DC United and Waterhouse FC met in our nation's capital at RFK Stadium. And just five minutes in, the 30-year-old striker Eddie Johnson put DC United in front. Joe Willis secured the shutout, and that was enough for a win in Group 4 for DC United. Tonight, the attention shifts down to Jamaica, the office in Kingston, Jamaica, which is never an easy place for visitors to come officially called the National Stadium. It's match day four, coverage of the CONCACAF Champions League. Waterhouse playing host to DC United. And look at that, some red and black fans have even made their way down to Jamaica to take this one in. Happy to have you along here on the night on Fox Soccer Plus. My name is Mark Rogandino, alongside U.S. international and longtime standout for the L.A. Galaxy in Major League Soccer. I'm talking about my man, Kobe Jones. Kobe, you look at D.C. United. Just one match played in the group play so far, but if they can get a result here tonight, they can put themselves in good standings in Group 4. But, oh, by the way, they're playing in Jamaica at the office. Well, the office is always a difficult place to play, but when we look at this D.C. United team, after one game, they're in perfect position. They have to be happy. They got a result against Waterhouse. It's the team right below them. Get a result tonight. They're pretty much through on, on the way to the quarterfinals. Waterhouse have already played three games and in six points in those three games so far as we just showed you their only loss coming against DC United. How did they fare on match day three against Toto? Well, Kobe, they didn't have much of a challenge and came away with a win on the night. Well, I think Waterhouse, for a team that was considered to be the one at the basement, they really came out and showed Taro that they are the dominant team. And you see this opportunity here. This is a player that has to be reckoned with. We look at Anderson and what he can do. They can find a way to counter against you and score that goal. DC United has made it very clear the athleticism of the Jamaican side is what could cause some problems. Here's Anthony Patrick starting 11 for the night. Well, when we look at Waterhouse, this 3-5-2 formation, a little bit questionable for me, but what they're trying to do is really plug that midfield up. They know how DC United is, a very good team. They're going to try to shut down those passing lanes. But for me, it's about Anderson. Number nine up top. Can DC United slow him down? Because as we saw, He's a talent, and he's the one that can do that individual effort and score a goal. We'll see about the ability to get forward for Waterhouse, but also those three at the back. How will they defend against a D.C. United team that knows how to get into the final third of the field as well? Here's Benny Olsen's 11. Well, Benny Olsen continuing to make some changes here. A very different lineup from what we saw in the first game against Waterhouse. A 4-4-2, but the biggest the biggest issue that I see up here, it's going to be a Spindola and Estrada, how they connect. Will it be the same connection as they had with Eddie Johnson? But I'm telling you, a Spindola, he can taste it. He knows what it's like to beat him in a final. Yeah, remember he did it with Real Salt Lake back a couple of years ago when they lost in the final to Monterey. Now he wears a DC United kit and he's down in Jamaica to take on Waterhouse. When we come back, we hand you over to JP De La Camera and Brian Dunsett for the first half. for Europa League is on Fox Soccer Plus. The fiercest competition. The hardest shots. The biggest matches. The Europa League. Live Thursday on Fox Soccer Plus. A promise was made, a promise that hit the beaches of Normandy, a vow that captured Iwo Jima, a contract that weathered Tet, a pledge that stormed the desert in Iraq, an IOU that braved IEDs in Kandahar. A promise was made to America's veterans. DAV fights to keep that promise, so all veterans and their families get the benefits and support they earned. For help, visit DAV.org. He's useless. Look at him. He hasn't been off the couch in five hours. There's a smell coming from this whole area. Yes! What? What? Yes! I hate you, Fox Sports One. You really needed to add even more college football to Saturday. Thank you for ruining a perfectly decent husband. When you're in a hospital, did you even brush your teeth this morning because your breath smells like toenails? The most important part of you that needs to survive is you. We thought this was the new physical therapy room. Boys, if you're gonna lie, lie well. 
does it hurt? Your body isn't you, your soul is you, and they can never cut into your soul. Red Band Society premieres tomorrow at 9, 8 central on Fox. All right, now, D.C. United is in a very good place in second place. Waterhouse already with six points, but, Dunny, this is their last game in the group stage. But it's a huge opportunity after back-to-back -back wins against Tower FC. Can Waterhouse get the full three points at home make it very difficult for those last two games for D.C. United in the group stage? More pressure on Waterhouse tonight. They can't afford to come away empty. Even one point may not help them because those last two games, D.C. United is home against Taro and at Taro who doesn't have anything really to play for. They're really already out of it with no points after two games. Adrian Skeet, man in the middle, calling this one tonight. He is from Barbados, DC United in the black uniforms. Bit of a difference in the lineup that we saw from the last game, especially when you look at who's starting in goal, Bill Amid. They're going with their number one goalkeeper, indicating the importance of this one. And plus, Dunny, they had six days off between their last game, so they're more rested than they were the last time they played this team. Well, I think if you take a look at Waterhouse's last result, a 4-1 win at home against Tower FC, Ben Olsen and company recognizing the danger. You have speed, you have athleticism, you have unpredictability up top for Waterhouse. For DC United, the focus is simple, decision making. Safety first defensively, and can you get to that halftime break without conceding? Demarley Samuels and Fabian Espindola wearing the captain's armbands tonight. Espindola, controversially suspended from the next game that's going to be against Chicago. A lot of people thought that should be a yellow card, not a red card that was given out in the last game. And that's more than likely the reason why he's playing tonight the same way that Eddie Johnson started in the previous game. Eddie was suspended from the upcoming MLS game and got the start. He was really the only regular that played on that night. Oh, it's a great opportunity. Fabian Espindola, nine goals, nine assists, and 22 appearances in Major League Soccer tonight. David Estrada hopefully can have the same type of impact that we saw against Waterhouse a couple of weeks ago. His speed, his athleticism, getting behind the defense and that cutting back ball, finding the feet of Eddie Johnson just a few minutes into that match, that was the difference maker. Many of these starters from Waterhouse we saw in the first game that was played at RFK Stadium, including the starting goalkeeper, Richard McCallum. Tonight he goes again up against DC United's top goalkeeper in Bill Amid. 84 degrees temperature-wise, but the humidity is 74% in the National Stadium, Kingston, Jamaica. Number 21, Samuel Incombe is making his debut in the CONCACAF Champions League. They recently signed him. He's been on two World Cup teams for Ghana yet to play in MLS. Just about set for action. First place, Waterhouse in Group 4. Second place, DC United. Last time Waterhouse gave a pretty good account of themselves. They just couldn't finish. DC only scored once in the fifth minute. Underway with Waterhouse on the ball in the predominant yellow, blue trim. DC United's in black. Ball is going to be played back toward goal, but not quite there. Over the halfway line, it was one of there by Incombe, then played over by Samuels. Forbes sending it up, and that's well wide of Bill Amid. It's going to roll over the end line. Should be a goal kick for Bill Amid who with Tim Howard's international, not retirement yet, but he's taking a year off from the game, puts Bill Amid back in the USA national team picture, one would think. Send this one long. Kasky got it forward. It's covered out of the back. Played long by Finlayson, looking for Anderson. Kemp was there on the sideline. Picked up by Ben Bao, who leaves it off. A lot of positive touches from the home side, Waterhouse. A lot of confident touches, really north to south. Balls up over the top. They look to the chest of Jermaine Anderson, the big number nine. Two goals in that 4-1 win against Tauro FC in the last group stage match. But keep an eye on this surface. Less than ideal for DC United. 
Waterhouse very, very familiar. Take a look at the way they touch the ball, the positive first touch in the space, and then utilizing their speed to get past DC United players. Campbell played it back. It's held up there by Upton Edwards. Played long by Evan Taylor. On the spin, Ben Bow leaves it off. Forbes. Five in yellow. Played it four to Ben Bow. One was made. And nobody spotted Samuels. Now it's played over to the right side instead. Ray cutting it back. Put there. Taken over. Caskey. DC United may have dodged one there. Speed the low looks for it. Tackled away from him. Not much room in that sideline. On the first leg at RFK Stadium, we saw Jermaine Anderson, the big number nine, play central primarily the entire match. So far, we've seen him flaring out to this right-hand side, trying to get in behind left back Taylor Kemp. That late delay run from Demarley Samuels, he looked like he just couldn't get his feet set quick enough to get that shot off uncontested just inside the 18-yard box. Finn Mason pushing it back. Demarley Samuels trying to play it short. And Waterhouse gets away with that. Here they come. Pass initially from Howell, but it's taken back by DC. In Coombe. Kofi Opare started the year with the LA Galaxy last year as well. Came over in a trade in the summer. Knocked back by Estrada. And then back to Incum. They try the long ball. Didn't work. And then Taylor leaves it off. Greg. Pushing it up. Taylor back to Greg. Chip to the halfway line. DC picks up the pressure there. Estrada's in the chase, forces a turnover. Almost there, but two players collide, and the foul is given. But Kasky won that ball. He had help in front. I can see Perry Kitchen talking to the referee and asking about that tackle. Ben Olsen not happy about it as well, but as Alex Kasky dips in, that's a heavy, heavy challenge. It was Upston Edwards who took Kasky down. Kasky's a very versatile player. In the last game against Waterhouse, he started as the left back. Today, he starts as white midfielder. DC United, meanwhile, will have an important free kick coming up here in the fifth minute. Voicing his protest to the fourth official. Well, that's incredible that we're not seeing a yellow card handed out for that type of challenge. But again, this is the difference for Ben Olsen and Ben Olsen and DC United compartmentalizing what they recognize as the rules in Major League Soccer, the way referees maintain a steady composure throughout the match versus what Concacaf Champions League can be at times. Spindola fires it. And I thought it was deflected, but if it was, it would have been off one of his own teammates. Because it's a goal kick for Richard McCallum. Jamaican international made his international debut back in 2006. McCallum is ready to put it back into play for Waterhouse. The Jamaican League First Division has already started a couple of games in, but Waterhouse yet to play. They have two games starting on Thursday of this week. Chase is on here, Estrada. Forced it out. Throw in, DC United. And Olsen, what a turnaround from last year. Last place to first so far in the Eastern Conference. Apare floats it up. One in the air, and cleared by Waterhouse, Taylor. Trying to keep it on the ground, that's cut off. Kemp pass. Estrada, formerly with Seattle, he gets clipped. And some of the physical play continues, but it's been caught. Kitchen puts it into play. Neal to the outside. Kemp. Field the knock ahead. And that left hand side for it. Cutting to the outside. Cuts it across. That's blocked. It's still loose in the box. And Waterhouse is able to move it away. Here by Finlayson. DC will collect it in the circle. Yeah, DC United starting to settle into this match now, getting a better hold of simple possession in the midfield. 
One thing they have to be very aware of at all times is the transition speed of play of Waterhouse. If they're going to commit numbers going forward, they have to have the right balance in that midfield third, making sure that Waterhouse can't quickly turn over through possession, find the feet of a player like Jermaine Anderson. And the offside flag was up. What a target, though, Anderson is. Already scoring a couple of goals in this competition. It's a second stint here, age 35. Probably the toughest player for DC United to have to contend with tonight. Set long by Bornbaum. It's going to go out. Cal will put it back into play. DC United, one of five teams for Major League Soccer in this competition. Two of the teams you'll see tomorrow in the same group. Montreal and the New York Red Bulls. Hamid rolls it to the left. Running backwards is Porter. Kyle Porter, a Canadian international, will leave it off. Lewis Neal for Kitchen. Kitchen was their MVP last year. Neal, long ball. Making the run was Kasky. It's going to be cleared out. Last touch by Marley Samuels. Again, very good decision making. Very patient. Putting their foot on the ball. Picking and choosing when to pull Waterhouse out defensively. And then looking if they can get in behind with a big switch. Estrada floats it up there. Headed up. And that's going to be well over McCallum. Scoreless in the ninth minute. For... Waterhouse and DC United with only three teams in the group. It's an odd schedule. Waterhouse is done today, and they may not know until October 21st if they would advance, because that's when DC United would finish up with Tauro. Samuels pushing it ahead. Benbaum played long by Anderson. Flag was up. There's that speed, there's that quickness. DC must be alert in the back. Especially so it's not their regular back line, except for Hamid. Well, everyone was surprised to see the number 44, Cordell Bembao, in the starting 11 tonight for Waterhouse. That's, from that angle, a very poor decision by the referee on the far side. But Bembao's been good. Small central midfielder, preferably on that left foot. Not afraid to get involved early and often. And looking to break quickly down this right-hand side of the DC United defense. Neil or Kemp. All right, JP, what I'm talking about, simple possession. This is the exact type of possession that DC needs to maintain. Looks to pull Waterhouse out of sitting deep. And just force them to chase a little bit. Field conditions less than ideal. You've got a bumpy pitch for a surface right now. But Waterhouse is going to spread that field out and look to combine and then quickly break in behind the defense of DC United. Espindola, someone has to close him. The shot, nice save by McCallum. Still stayed in play. Terrific save. Espindola didn't have a completely free shot, but pretty close. It's going to be ruled a goal kick. That well, was a special touch from Fabiana Spindola. The way he gets the defender to bite, then chops that ball back to his preferred left foot. Huge save by Richard McCallum. Goes down and parries that with that big right hand. And as Kyle Porter looks to keep that ball into play, McCallum gets that last touch. McCallum's going to have to be big tonight. Waterhouse, the surprise of the tournament so far, based on the results so far on the road and at home against Tauro FC. With three points tonight, they can make it very, very difficult for DC United, force DC United to be thinking about playing their strongest possible lineup in their final two matches. Maurice Seydoux has scored for the Philadelphia Union. They have a lead over Seattle. It's the U.S. Open Cup final being played tonight at the home of the Union, PPL Park. And the winner of that gets an automatic berth in next year's CONCACAF Champions League. So besides the trophy and the prize money, Dunny, the stakes are even higher now. 
12th minute, zeros on the scoreboard here. Waterhouse and DC United. Corner kick here for DC. The outswing, that's Porter. And as he tried to get up, apparently he's the one that fouls Finlayson. Thoughts on the way the game has played out so far? Not surprised to see Waterhouse control the first five minutes. I think they came out to try to utilize that home field advantage. I think DC United starting to settle into the match. 13 minutes in, getting that possession in the midfield third. Those small, short combination passes forcing Waterhouse to get out of that 3-5-2 formation, sitting deep, and then looking to spring a guy like Alex Kasky down this right-hand side. I still want to see David Estrada make himself a little bit more available. Fabian Espindola is doing a very good job dipping back in the midfield, holding the ball up when necessary. But you're going to have to see that checking and movement between Espindola and Estrada early and often in a game like this, especially with this type of surface. Inko, that's cut off. Ben Bao, cutting, chipping in. Maybe a chance here, a collision there. Referee's looking the other way, no call. Much to the dismay of the home fans. And it's going to be cleared out of play. Ball belongs to Waterhouse. Our left back, Taylor Kemp, very, very fortunate as he tucks in with that late delayed run inside the 18-yard box. Definite contact in a game like this. You would think the referee would be quick to point to the spot, but a little clipped in ball, and that's a heavy challenge. That's a gutsy challenge, and it's a risky challenge from Taylor Kemp, one he gets away with. Very often, you don't get away with that in CONCACAF. On more warning signs, JP, is that late delayed run from the number 18 to Marley Samuels coming down that right-hand side. Second time we've seen him make that darting inside run off the right shoulder of the left back, Taylor Kemp, but on the outside shoulder of Steve Birnbaum. And he's the left back. He scored twice already in this competition. Ball deflected out. Belongs to Waterhouse. There's Samuels, quick throw in. Ben Bao, cutting, get himself free. There's that quickness. He'll cross it, and he came out. There was a collision. No foul call there either. Headed away by Kitchen, out to safety. Throw in Waterhouse. Oh, keep an eye on Ben Bao, JP. He's been incredibly impressive this first 15 minutes. He has all the attributes to make you think that at some point in the near future, you could see him in camp with an MLS team. His speed, his strength, his athleticism, his individual technique, and his desire to be in one-on-one -on -one situations. He's been impressive this first 15 minutes. Taylor, keeping it on the ground, that's blocked. Cruz Azul has scored against Chorillo Formica, 15th minute, to give them the good start in that game. Later, Portland is playing Olympia, and there are three games going on tomorrow in the CONCACAF Champions League. Incum with this long throw in up the wing. Some contact there, foul on DC United. Evan Taylor will put this one into play. Started in the road game against DC United in our nation's capital. It's going to send it all the way back. Campbell, and now it's switched. Bad ball picked off. Kasky thought he had something going quickly. And that ball is off target. Close player two. It was a spin to luck. DC's back on the ball. Porter plays it back for possession. Kemp. Neal. As in Kuma if he wants him. Drifts toward him. Kuma Kitchen almost too close to one another. That was Kasky who's getting in there. Right side too far for Neal on a play. Throw in Waterhouse. Marley Samuels. Got it in quickly. Forbes. Taylor. Moving it out. You and Gray. Much room in that sideline. DC's trying to make it even shorter, more compact as they defend. Taylor. 
I like what I've seen from Barry Kitchen. He's recognizing that if he applies just a little bit more pressure, he can force Waterhouse into some suspect decisions while in possession. The first five minutes, there was a lot of respect given to Waterhouse while they played the ball from side to side, that teeter-totter effect. But as DC United's confidence grows in possession, their confidence grows defending as well. As when they're turning the ball over, they're pressing with numbers, they're compacting space, and they're looking to recover as quickly as possible. Anderson left it off. Back to the halfway line. Taylor towards the right sideline. Gray cuts. Anderson was calling for it. Pass was deflected. For a Waterhouse throw in for Hugh and Gray. Another Jamaican international. Very quickly to Campbell. Back to Taylor. Lost it there. And the race is on. Good job. And Layson cleared it out. Beating a spindle on that side. year he's having. Had a good year last year with the Red Bulls, I thought. Nine goals, a couple of assists, but went in the re-entry draft. That was a tremendous pickup for DC United. Well, he's been incredibly consistent since he came to the league with Real Salt Lake. And If it hadn't been for the constraints of what the salary cap looks like in Major League Soccer at present day, I don't think you would have ever seen Real Salt Lake part ways with Fabio Espinola had they not had to. Always cleared out of play. Another throw in coming up, 19th minute. Scoreless between Waterhouse and DC United. Ben Olsen's team arrived on Sunday. They'll leave tomorrow, Saturday game at the Chicago Fire. First place in the Eastern Conference, six games left. All versus conference foes. Three home and three and away. That one was off target. United qualified for this tournament after beating Real Salt Lake at Rio Tinto Stadium in last year's Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup final. Shocking result on the road for D.C. who won, what, three games all of last year? Potential trouble there, avoided. Samuels for Waterhouse. Couldn't get free on that sideline. Some good work defensively by Estrada. Another throw in. Two players holding on one another. Van Bob getting free. Far side brought down. Tough ball, but Gray takes it. Doesn't make the most of it. Still going to be captured there on the end line. Here's Ben Bow again. Terrific moves. Played it in front off of Mead. Kept it in front of him. Cleared by Opare. The more you see a Ben Bow, the more you have to like of him. Every touch has been good. Clean. And he's popped up all over this field. Forbes. Try to find Anderson, cut off by Porter. Short to Forbes. He'll drive the long ball. It's too ambitious. Goal kick for Bill Amin. Lead huge at 6'3", 225. And still just 23 years of age in his fifth year. We're starting to see all that experience pay off. He's settling down. He's becoming the leader that everyone was hoping it could become. And if you look at Bill Hamid, he's, he's got all the physical tools that can replicate what Timmy Howard has done throughout his career. We have Champions League action coming to you tonight from Kingston, Jamaica, the National Stadium. 
Waterhouse from Jamaica taking on DC United with Brian Dunseth, JP Della Camera. Thanks for joining us tonight. Big night, CONCACAF Champions League play here on Fox as well as UEFA Champions League. Is there a card coming? There is. Now we've seen the referee now draw the line 22 minutes in with Taylor Kemp getting the first yellow card of the night. Now the hope is that we'll see consistency with the calls until that final whistle. Kemp's just a second year pro. Limited action in MOS, but getting to play in these games. Pushed on the ground on the right sideline. Cut across, but Amid is there. Now, if you want to watch a battle, keep an eye on the big number nine, Jermaine Anderson and Kofi Opare, the big number six center back for DC United. Every time that ball goes wide, keep your eyes on those two players. Pushing, shoving, digging into each other, getting arms underneath, trying to raise the opponent out of their positioning. That's going to be the battle to watch until Jermaine Anderson subbed off. Remember, two goals last game against Tower FC. Size, strength, athleticism up front for Waterhouse. Kitchen for Inkum. Kasky back for Inkum. Neil left foot to the head towards Porter. Two players missed that ball in the air. Throwing for Waterhouse. 24th minute. Zero still on the scoreboard. Waterhouse right now in first place in group four. But this is their final game in the group stage. Edwards back to goal. McCallum. Some heavy pressure now from DC United. And forces that turnover. Throw in for DC. Well, again, that forced turnover just starts with simple pressure defensively. That was a slip that allows Kitchen to come through for a speed to lot. Played it across, and nobody could get to it in black for DC. Well, from that angle, that close, the spindle is normally money. Well, not a bad idea from Fabiana Spindle. A less preferred right foot. That little chopped back cut ball looks for the run of Perry Kitchen. Just looking to reward the combination play inside the box. Unselfish. Maybe to a fault. Neil for DC. 25th minute. Still scoreless from Jamaica. Kyle Porter against Gray. Switching from right to left, foot-wise. Back to Neil in the box, cleared out. DC should collect this ball back, they do. In Coombe, from Kitchen, driven up. There's one in the air again by Waterhouse. They look for a numerical advantage. Trying to get numbers forward. Kept on the ground, right side, cleared away. It's intended for Howell, straight ahead. And Layson sends it in wide of Bill Amid. Goal kick, DC United. Now those are the decisions that let them down in the first leg at RFK Stadium. And you can see why Bill Hamid immediately is up forward talking to his center backs as well as his central midfielders, making sure that there's pressure even from shots from distance. But Waterhouse, they had a tendency to pull this trigger from 25, 30 yards out without hesitation. And a lot of those opportunities that presented themselves totally went wasted in that first leg at RFK. DC on the attack. Inside the box. Set across. Kasky couldn't settle. Quick shot taken was blocked once. Second try for Porter. Clear it. Given right back to Incombe. He floats it up there off the chest. Kasky couldn't come around. Well, DC's had some... Decent looks anyway. We've got a player down for Waterhouse. Ball didn't seem to fall right for them. Where they could get a uncontested clear look at goal. Edwards was the player down. Shaking it off in the 27th minute.
In Coombs throw in. He'll get it back. In Coom up the right side. Cut off. And the player that went down, Edwards. Picked off again by In Coom. Out for a throw in, but it belongs to the home side, Waterhouse. And now it's DC with Kasky feeling something. He took that heavy, heavy shot from Hugh and Gray early in this match. And Alex Kasky, you talked about it earlier, JP, at times he's played as a left back, other times as a wide midfielder. When he's at his best and when he excels, Alex Kasky individually balled his feet running at outside backs. Statistically isn't having the year, hasn't been as effective as he was hoping for, but still one of the very few players, young players in this league that wants that ball at his feet, wants to take players on one-on-one. Here's Ben Bao with that quickness. Ball was slightly behind Gray. Put up there towards Anderson, one in the air again by Opare. Deflected ball, falling to Waterhouse. Nice flick, Samuels is in. Gawali Samuels shot, saved by Amid. He had a very inv inviting far post, but he couldn't find it. That was as dangerous, though, as Waterhouse has looked on the night with everything going their way. The ball movement, the runs off the ball, and then that last touch. Quick shot from distance. Samid goes down for it. Samuels may not get a better look tonight. Shots are even, but he was in on Amid. Spindler nodded it down. Taken back by Gray. Taylor. Gray will push it back. Finlayson. Jamaican international central defender. And Bow short pass Forbes. Campbell. I like the shape from DC United. 29 minutes in. Estrada sits deep underneath Fabian Espindola. Just kind of fronts that midfield four. It allows Perry Kitchen and Lewis Neal just to really boss around defensively what DC United needs to do. Good communication in the midfield so far. Good first 30 minutes for DC on the road. Taylor finding the open man on the outside. Ben Bow. Drops it back, edge of the box, played in, and there was Anderson. You heard a whistle before that as he headed it over the bar. Well, so far, the most exciting player with the ball at his feet has been Ben Bow, the number 44. There's a size, the strength, the presence of Jermaine Anderson as he pushes off the backside of Steve Birnbaum. But again, the number 44 for Waterhouse, Cornell Ben Bow, has done a great job. Every time he's got the ball at his feet, you can tell he's a showman. He wants to take players on. He wants to put the defender on the back heel with his first touch. And then he looks to get the defender to bite. Had a few good opportunities, but good communication, good steady performance from this man, Bill Hamid. A lot of, a lot of respect across the back line that he's earned, a lot of trust. And you can see it's been a confident performance so far from the D.C. goalkeeper. He's rebounding from that miserable year last year where he only won a couple of games. That tells you something about his confidence to go from as bad as it was last year to as good as it's been this year. Well, you have to wonder how many conversations he had with a guy like Brad Guzan. I mean, if you remember, Brad Guzan was thrown to the Wolves with Chivas, Chivas USA, yeah. and after that, he became one of the best goalkeepers in Major League Soccer, and then that transitioned over to the English Premier League. So, you think about the future of Bill Hamid, again, physically, all the traits that he has could potentially replicate the 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 entire career of a guy like Timmy Howard. It's up to him. He certainly has all the tools. He was on the wrong side of a spindle up. Better than a half hour gone here. DC United, this is a good result for them the way it is at the moment. For Waterhouse, it's more vital for them that they could pick up three points in the last group stage game. Still doesn't mean they clinch anything, only the group winners advance, but it puts them in a far better position than if they come away with one or no points tonight.
Opari. Settled there by Kitchen. Cruz Azul, and the Valadez goal has added a second one, leading Chorio from Panama. Here are the standings in Group 6 if these results hold. If that result holds, I should say, in the Cruz Azul game. This match here is from Group 4. First place Waterhouse and DC United in second. Zero still on the board now in the 33rd minute. Kasky left it off. Porter has switched sides. Neal. Kitchen. In Coombe. Right side, Kasky. It's blocked out. Should be a DC United. No. It's going to be ruled the other way. Last touched apparently by Kasky. Samuels. Up the wing for Anderson. Brought down by Incoom. Foul on DC. There you go. Forbes chases it down. Taylor. Cut off by Estrada, but he lost it out. Thirty-fourth minute, still zeros on the board. DC United at Waterhouse from the National Stadium in Jamaica, which has always been a tough place for visitors visiting national teams in Concacaf. Gray. Not much room on that side. Cut off there. Kept on the ground. Cut it for Estrada. And then Espindola never got to him. Waterhouse in the yellow and blue trim. Back on the ball. Powell. Campbell. Taylor. Chad Barrett. What a year he's had. Scored a bunch of goals. In big games for the Seattle Sounders, he gets one on the road in Philadelphia. That Open Cup final, 1-1. Incum trying to get that ball forward. Now Incum having words with Samuels. Well, you can see Incum's motion felt like a stomp had come across him to Marley Samuels. Second time we've seen a heavy challenge on this near hand side and again. Waterhouse is, they're, they're going to be unapologetic with the physical nature of their play, especially in a game like this, recognizing that with the full three points, they could put themselves in a great spot to force DC United into some tough games, both home and on the road at Tower FC. Played in, headed down, but right at goal. McCallum was there. The party came flashing through. Looked like he might have had one for DC. A good whipped in ball, an in swinger takes a slight touch, and Richard McCallum, right place, takes the ball off the skip easily into the stomach. Moved ahead to Howell for Waterhouse, 36th minute. Still a scoreless one from Jamaica. Campbell to the outside with that pass, driven in, never made it to the box. There's one in the air by Burnbaum, the rookie. Out of the University of California. The Waterhouse playing with a unpredictable attack going forward. A lot of players interchanging, moving second runs, getting in behind. And DC's doing a good job just keeping the game in front of them as much as possible. Samuels. It's knocked ahead. Powell cutting. Oh, he's being held there. Trying to free himself up for a shot. Instead, it's a chip into the box. Cut back. Anderson blocked. He'll try it again. Blocked again. Still loose. Collected and cleared by DC United. Well, some close calls done here at both ends of the field tonight, but no goals. Yet. Yeah. 
Waterhouse will put it back into play. Taylor. Great idea. That's the first one that probably Ben Bow missed today. That he maybe could have controlled. Yeah, we've seen Ben Bow pop up starting centrally, then on the left hand side, over on the right hand side. Take a look at some of the subs available. Chris Pontius, Louis Silva, Sean Franklin, Bobby Boswell. So if the need is there, just like it was in the first game at RFK, Ben Olsen can go to his bench and bring in impact players, both offensively and defensively. Ben and, Bout. and now the focus for DC United, just getting to the halftime break without conceding. That's the first step necessary on the way to positive points on the road in Jamaica tonight. Forbes left it. Gray continues. They've got the advantage call. Powell laid it back. Edwards leaves it. Kenardo Forbes. Oh, he gave it right back to Espindola, but it's one against three at the moment. Fabian takes them on, beats them all. Espindola with a chip, and Fabian Espindola with a terrific strike. Mark that down as one of the goals of this tournament for sure. He beats three players and a goalkeeper with class. That's a marvelous finish from Espindola. Well timed as well. You're talking about getting out 0-0. This is better for them. But Waterhouse cannot believe the goal that they just conceded. And this is a phenomenal, phenomenal individual effort from Fabiana Espindola. Not only does his work rate put him in a situation where he can pick up an errant pass, but he takes on two defenders with slight stutters Gets it on the preferred left foot, rounds the final defender, and then a cheeky chip to the far post. And there is nothing the goalkeeper, Richard McCallum, can do about it. And he has this stadium stunned by what they just saw. It's not really a goal against the run of play. Wouldn't you say it's been fairly even in this first half? It's been fairly even. It has. I think Waterhouse individually has found themselves in a few dangerous spots, but. As Spindola, he's, he's been a warrior up top by himself tonight. To see that type of magic, that type of special touch that leads to such a great opportunity. There's not too many players in the world that can do what Fabiana Spindola just did. That CONCACAF replay showed a lot of attention to that finish. But there were three players initially back there when he intercepted the ball. Beat them all and the goalkeeper in a place where there was no way he could reach it. So in the first game when these two clubs met, it was an early goal. Now it's a later goal in the first half. You see how meaningful this one is. Ball played long. In Coombe. Now before when you were talking about maybe getting to halftime, still want that zero, but now they can at least have a lead going in. That was more... An incidental contact. Kasky went down. Uh, Kasky's was just getting, in. He's just getting beat up all night long. It's now going to be Jermaine Anderson going into the book in the 41st minute. Third time. Foul, right? Third time we've seen Kasky just get launched into. He knows. Yeah, he looks like a superhero. <laughs> So that's the second booking. Kemp was also issued a card for DC United earlier. So now we're in the tough stages here. Final five minutes of this opening half. Kasky's probably taken enough hits that most players take in 90 minutes. And he's only gone 40. In Kuma put the ball back into play for DC United. Set up field. It'll bounce to Porter. Gray defends. Porter. Try to cut it back. No angle there. He'll play it back safe for possession. Back for Porter. 
Something's happening with that. I understand. He's trying to listen in. Going by the fourth official. Well, there's going to be some extras in this game, and if it's not at the end of this first half, it'll definitely be in the second 45 minutes. This group from Waterhouse recognizes the opportunity that's on the line tonight. And should the result not go in their favor, don't be surprised to see the physicality in this game ramp up to a different level. DC trying to clear this ball away. You're looking before it, one of Ben Olsen's assistants, Chad Ashton, who was questioning the fourth official. Field, Waterhouse looking. It's high, well high, over Bill Amid. 43rd minute. A chance goes away. Benbaugh's the player that's down. Now this youngster's been incredibly exciting in this first half. Every time he touches this ball, you can hear the fans get to their feet and get excited to see what he's capable of doing. Hamid strikes it long. Kasky was after it. Headed out, though, by Waterhouse. The 25-year-old right back in Coombe had that throw in. It's deflected out. He'll get another. And some words from his coach, Ben Olsen, on the sideline. Towards the corner. The look was for Estrada. And Finlayson was swinging the arms up. Estrada thought the foul was going to go in his favor. It did not. Taylor. In the dying minutes of the first half. Kemp gets called. Free kick for Waterhouse. Trying to get into play quickly with time running out in the first half. Off Anderson, cleared away. That's yeah, an interesting decision, JP, isn't it? To see Waterhouse not just try to get their big boys forward in the box, put the ball in a dangerous spot, but elect to play on the ground with DC United's back four and the two central midfielders sitting in front of them. That decision-making in the final third is what killed Waterhouse in the first leg at RFK, and tonight it's doing the same in the first 45 minutes. Kitchen moves it outside. Final minute of this opening half. Neal for Kasky. In Coombe for Lewis Neal. Um, these two players, Perry Kitchen and Lewis Neal, have really settled this game down for DC United. Porter took one up high. There is no call there either. Porter stays down. Chipped ahead. We're in stoppage time. Waterhouse looking for the big play at the end. And it goes closer to Bill Amid. To Incoom. There's Neil. His third year with the team. Midfielder from England sending it forward. Cleared by Waterhouse to Taylor. Less than a half minute to play. And for our match referee, Skeet. It's true to one minute of stoppage. Gets it back from Estrada, stepping in, gets cooked again. Right at the end from Romario Campbell. He's probably drawn more fouls tonight than anyone. This might be the last kick of the first half. It was. So DC United would have been happy 
with a scoreless game at halftime, but Dunning, they've got a 1-0 lead now thanks to Espindola's goal. Well, the first step's completed for DC United. They got a wonder strike from Fabian Espindola. They got to the halftime break without conceding. Now let's see what half, what changes are made at halftime by Waterhouse and how Ben Olsen and company counter them. Good start for DC United thanks to Fabian Espindola's terrific goal. They've got a 1-0 lead on their own at Waterhouse. Acne is a difficult skin condition. As dermatologists, we've seen how devastating it can be. When we created Proactive, there is nothing like it. Take control now and help prevent future breakouts before they start. That's what Proactive means. Now we've taken it to a whole new level. New technology, more medicine, and nourishing skin care. This is our best solution, loaded with everything you need to keep skin beautiful and luminous every day. Welcome to the whole new world of Proactive Plus. Our exciting breakthrough combines smarter acne medicine with advanced skin care. Acne breakouts, dark marks, blotchy or irritated skin? All new Proactive Plus can give you complete control. It's our smartest, fastest, most effective solution ever. I never thought my skin would look this good. It's just incredibly smooth. And now I have clear skin. Other treatments can leave medicine on the skin, but our new Smart Target technology pulls medicine off the surface, putting two times more into pores where acne starts. And with proactive moisture care, your skin is nurtured to a touchable soft finish. It makes your skin feel so smooth, so soft. It feels so good. <laughs> Prescriptions can cost $200 or more, but call in the next four minutes and get new Proactive Plus. Not for $200, not even $100, but just $29.95. And today, shipping is free. Heal breakouts and perfect your complexion. So many of my patients struggle with big pores or dry skin or oily skin. With Proactive Plus, now you can have both clear and radiant skin. I never did think my skin could look this good. <laughs> it's actually really exciting. Hurry, act fast for a free deluxe upgrade to also get three new skin perfecting extras at no additional charge. Call 1-800-754-9978 and get all this for just $29.95. And shipping is free. Results guaranteed or your money back. 1-800-754-9978. Destination for Europa League is on Fox Soccer Plus. The fiercest competition. The hardest shots. The biggest matches. The Europa League. Live Thursday on Fox Soccer Plus. When you're in a hospital, did you even brush your teeth this morning because your breath smells like toenails? The most important part of you that needs to survive is you. We thought this was the new physical therapy room. Boys, if you're gonna lie, lie well. What's your sky? Your sky? Does it hurt? Your body isn't you, your soul is you, and they can never cut into your soul. Red Band Society premieres tomorrow at 9, 8 central on Fox. From the heart of the United Kingdom, Scotland's finest square off. It's just what they do! As the drama unfolds, Destiny will be decided. Ahead already in the Highlands. Rushing towards the title. Friday, Partick Thistle versus St. Mirren on Fox Soccer Plus. The Camp Champions League Halftime Show is presented by the car company Scion. What moves you? We've played 45 minutes down in Kingston, Jamaica so far tonight inside the office. And maybe a bit of a surprise, but not for D.C. United fans. D.C. out in front, 1-0 against the host Waterhouse FC. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first half highlights brought to you by Scion. It's actually DC Kobe to get the early chance. Well, this is once again a little bit of individual effort by Espindola taking that shot from distance. He says, why not? He's going to, you know, crack it up. McCallum comes up with the save there. But then in the 28th minute, one of several chances for the hosts. Yeah, this is Samuel coming up on that left-hand side as a left back. And you know what? Bill Hamid comes up with the big save. 
38th minute, all of a sudden they give away and Espindola does the rest. Well, this is what a little effort can do for you. This is actually a fabulous individual effort by Fabian Espindola. And mind you, remember, he is left-footed and that's a beautiful chip over the top, absolutely fabulous. That one made me smile. Yeah, one nothing DC United as we're through 45 minutes down there in the office. You could say uh, just another day in the office for Fabian Espindola <laughs> and DC United. Mark Rogandino and Kobe Jones back here with you. Uh, we thought it was going to be nil-nil heading into the break, but that goal certainly changes things heading toward the second half. Yeah, when we looked at this, this match, the way it was going, it was going back and forth, but in the end, it really came down to that individual effort by Fabian Espindola, and you know what? He changes everything. After that, DC United gets more control of the game, and now they're just playing it out. It's going to be interesting to see if that does indeed give the visitors from Major League Soccer a little bit of something to take into the second half. When we come back, though, we'll shift gears a little bit. Plenty of games going on right now in the CONCACAF Champions League, including are the champs, Cruz Azul, in trouble. They're in action tonight against the Panamanian side, Chorillo. We'll take a look what's going on at Estadio Azul when we come back. The CONCACAF Champions League Halftime Show is presented by Scion. Acne is a difficult skin condition. As dermatologists, we've seen how devastating it can be. When we created Proactive, there is nothing like it. Take control now and help prevent future breakouts before they start. That's what Proactive means. Now we've taken it to a whole new level. New technology, more medicine, and nourishing skin care. This is our best solution, loaded with everything you need to keep skin beautiful and luminous every day. Welcome to the whole new world of Proactive Plus. Our exciting breakthrough combines smarter acne medicine with advanced skin care. Acne breakouts, dark marks, blotchy or irritated skin? All new Proactive Plus can give you complete control. It's our smartest, fastest, most effective solution ever. Now, I never thought my skin would look this good. It's just incredibly smooth. And now, I have clear skin. Other treatments can leave medicine on the skin, but our new Smart Target technology pulls medicine off the surface, putting two times more into pores where acne starts. And with Proactive Moisture Care, your skin is nurtured to a touchable soft finish. It makes your skin feel so smooth, so soft. It feels so good. <laughs> Prescriptions can cost $200 or more, but call in the next four minutes and get new Proactive Plus. Not for $200, not even $100, but just $29.95. And today, shipping is free. Heal breakouts and perfect your complexion. So many of my patients struggle with big pores or dry skin or oily skin. With Proactive Plus, now you can have both clear and radiant skin. I never did think my skin could look this good. <laughs> it's actually really exciting. Hurry, act fast for a free deluxe upgrade to also get three new skin perfecting extras and no additional charge. Call 1-800-754-9978 and get all this for just $29.95. And shipping is free. Results guaranteed or your money back. 1-800-754-9978. Destination for Europa League is on Fox Soccer Plus. The fiercest competition. The hardest shots. The biggest matches. The Europa League. Live Thursday on Fox Soccer Plus. That was good. On FXM. He's a rowdy boy. It's reckless. You're at EOD. It's cool. It's gangster. Yeah, I think so. Do you copy? My job is to keep you safe. It's combat, buddy. My team leader is inspiring. He's gonna get me killed. We got a lot of eyes on us, James. The blast will come up the block! James, come back now! The Hurt Locker. Sunday at 8, 5 Pacific. What are you doing? I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die comfortable. On FXM. We often don't see what is right in front of us. Even though we are surrounded by many blessings, we live unsatisfied. Looking for what we haven't lost, sacrificing what we do have, and our beliefs, our dreams, become nightmares. Where is happiness? Ayate Espero. Premieres September 30th, 6, 5 Central, only on Mundo Fox. CONCACAF Champions League Halftime Show is presented by Scion. Maybe an opportunity there, a shot and a goal! Right away, Cruz is 
Cruzo strikes. Quick shot, there's the goal for Cruzo's hole. Save of the game, and you could argue save of the tournament. Fabian cracks it back post. Knocked in by Pavone. Cruzo's hole leads. Cruzo's hole are the champions of CONCACAF. After the Cementeros raised the trophy in the CONCACAF Champions League last campaign, they've struggled a bit this campaign. Just one point through two matches coming into the night and recently coming off of a loss against the Panamanian champions Chorillo. Now they would face each other again tonight down at Estadio Azul. We pick up the highlights in minute 15. Well, Cruz Azul responding to all the questions with more of a direct attack down the left-hand side. Saved by Torres, but you know, Ornamica steps up and there's no opportunity as he can just pass this into an open net. So just 15 minutes in, Cruz Azul out in front, 1-0, and then a little more than 10 minutes before the break, off the set piece, Kobe, a chance to add to it. Now we know what it's all about with set pieces. It's all about timing. And right here, Val Valadez up in the air, no one around him. He beats his man to the near post and it's just a little deflection. And all the keeper can do is watch. 2-0 at the break there, back here in Kingston. 1-0 with DC United out in front, compliment of the Spindola. We come back, we can hand you back over to JP De La Camera and Brian Dunseth for the second half. The CONCACAF Champions League Halftime Show was presented by the car company Scion. What moves you? It's summer. Do you want clear, sexy skin all over? There's great news from Proactive, the number one acne brand in America. You can get rid of breakouts on your chest, back, and shoulders with our amazing deep cleansing wash. For a limited time, when you order Proactive Plus, we'll send you the deep cleansing wash free with this sizzling summer special. Imagine finally having the confidence to show off your clear skin. I always had to wear high cut shirts because my acne would show. The deep cleansing body wash is really making a difference. Now I can wear tank tops, I can wear bathing suits. The deep cleansing wash is a great way to help keep your body clear. And for acne on your face, Proactive Plus is now our fastest, most effective system ever. The secret is our exclusive Smart Target technology. We're now able to deliver two times more medicine into pores right where breakouts start. So you'll see results fast. In fact, Proactive Plus is proven to be four times faster than the leading topical prescription. When I found Proactive Plus, it just clicked. And suddenly my skin was flawless and people were like, wow, your skin looks so good. I'm like, I know, I know. So are you ready for clear, sexy skin all over? Call 1-800-569-6516 now and get the amazing Proactive Plus system for only $39.95. And to keep your body clear, we'll send you the deep cleansing wash as our gift. Hey, that's a $34 value free. Proactive Plus works. I don't have any zits, and I'm totally confident in my skin, even if I don't have makeup on. But check this out. Call in the next five minutes, and we'll take off an extra $10, plus free shipping. You'll get all this for only $29.95. So whether you're hitting the beach, hanging by the pool, or having a romantic night, you can feel great showing off your clear, gorgeous skin. Clear skin for summer. Guaranteed or your money back. Just try it. It's like, what have you been wishing for all year? Clear skin. They all should be embarrassed. It's a real mess. What in the world was our government thinking? The news is breaking every Keeping a close eye on what's going on. Explosive story. There was a lockdown. Most and a horror broke loose. We are live. Are these displaced people? A desperate situation. What are we going to tell the American people? What's going to happen? Yeah. It sounds like war is inevitable. Israelis want peace. Desperately. Greta Van Susteren. On the ground. Chasing the real story. And getting the truth. Nothing gets by Greta. On the record, weeknights of 7 on the Fox News Channel. But a lot better than last week. We weren't born to follow. Well, the Portland Timbers will try to put themselves in a better spot tonight. They're at home taking on Olympia. We'll see what lineup Caleb Porter puts out this evening. Coming up soon, 8 p.m. Eastern on Fox Sports 1. John Strong and Janusz Mahalik 
We'll have the call on that one. All kinds of CONCACAF Champions League action tonight. There's a man that scored one of the goals. I would think of this tournament. Fabian Espindola. Could it be enough to put DC United in the driver's seat to win this group? We'll see another 45 minutes to go. We'll see if there are any changes, Dunny, for the second half. That's from Mario Campbell, pretty active. And these two clubs met in our nation's capital. Not as much on the ball tonight as he was on that night. There don't appear to be any changes at the start of this half. You had mentioned before that deep bench for DC United. So whether they need a goal or they need to protect the game, number of ways that they can go the experience bench that they have tonight. We're going to see part of that. Franklin is going to come in for Kasky. That might be injury related. Kasky, we mentioned, took so many hits in that opening half of play. And that's Franklin's normal position as the right back. Well, I'll be very, very interested to see where Samuel Hincomb slides forward, what that relationship looks like with Hincomb in front of Sean Franklin. But you bring in a ton of experience across that back line now with Sean Franklin playing off that right shoulder of Kofi Opari. Let's see, is that where he's going to play? Because he can play right midfield too. Let's see how it shakes out. Second half is underway. He is in the back. He's at the start. So experience here for DC United with Franklin. And the foul was called. Frank has won a couple of MLS Cups for the LA Galaxy. Was another good pickup for Ben Olsen during the offseason. Picked up some quality veterans to add to what they had. We mentioned the Spindler. They also picked up Eddie Johnson, Davey Arnell, Franklin, Boswell. Quite a turnover. Free kick. Hugh and Gray was over the ball. Started this second half. that battle I was talking about. Opare and Anderson up top. Keep an eye on these two players. Two in the wall. Struck by Gray. Cleared out. Blasted. Way up and over. Campbell had the opportunity. And again, same decision making that let them down on the road at RFK Stadium. Absolutely no reason to take that type of risk with a shot when you can put it back in a dangerous spot. And for Waterhouse, if they continue with this type of decision making that we just saw, it's going to be very difficult to break down DC United's back line. Finlayson leaves it off. We're on that far sideline. Taylor. Block. DC. Trying to win it up high, maybe get a second goal, take some of the pressure off. Goal differential could be a factor in this competition at some point. Franklin got it forward, brought down there by Estrada. The wing from Incoom deflected out by Waterhouse. DC United throw in. You want to see DC do anything different, Dunny, in the second half? Just game management. Game management with and without the ball. Recognizing when to step as a unit and then committing those numbers forward based on the very initial first step. And then the possession. I want to see Neil and Perry Kitchen have the same type of influence in that midfield of what we saw in the first 45 minutes. The speed, the quickness of Ben Bao. Trying to cut inside. Block, he'll get it right. Look at this. Played it back. Shot went wide. Number 44 in yellow, Ben Bob, to me is the most dangerous player in the field for Waterhouse. Well, last year it was Waylon Francis who ended up at the Columbus Crew. He was the young player that impressed me. And, and this young player, Cordell Ben Bao, I, I, I would imagine, I would imagine right now at MLS headquarters, there's been one or two teams that have called to look to put him on the discovery list. When you see a player that's that, that excited, and every time he takes that first touch, with that type of speed, that type of athleticism, 
He's got a little swagger to him. Yeah. This little number 44. He does. He's a confident player. That's called against Waterhouse. I think, JP, it's one of the other interesting dynamics of a tournament like this. You've got this David versus Goliath situation in these tournaments and an opportunity for all of these players when they go up against Major League Soccer teams to showcase themselves, not only as a team, as a group, as a unit, but as individuals. And that potential to take that next step as a professional. Offside flag up on Estrada. Waterhouse put it back into play. Nowhere to go on that far sideline. Push back. Gray is open to bypass him. And they give the ball right back to Porter. Brings it to the middle of the field. Congested area, he'll lay it off. That's good patience. Good patience, good decision making from Kyle Porter. If it's not on, don't force it. Kemp holding there. From the University of Maryland. Now here's Kitchen from Acton, where he only played one year. Franklin to the outside. It's better from DC United letting the ball do the work. Incombs cross. The spindle is there with a header. Fabian the Spindola. A 2 0 lead for DC United. After about six passes together, they find the open man in a Spindola. I thought he was going to run into his own teammates. Makes it count. Right, it's patient. It's in the buildup, probing with movement off the ball. Good decision making. And Samuel Income, Income get his first start on this right-hand side. Started his right back. Now he's in the midfield with the introduction of Sean Franklin. Poor marking from Hugh and Gray, the number 12, and Fabiana Spindola, great camera angle. Far post, side net, absolutely nothing that Richard McCallum can do about it. And Fabiana Spindola gets his second of the match and alleviates a ton of pressure on DC United. Well, he won't be able to play on Saturday because of the suspension we mentioned earlier. More than making up for his absence with this game tonight. On the right side, it's Franklin. This result stands. They'll be at six points, same as Waterhouse, with two games to play. And both against the team that's already been the eliminated, Taro. So you'd have to love DC United's chances to advance into the knockout stage. Estrada gave that ball away. Slide tackle from Neal. Whitehouse back on with the advantage call. Now they need to really open things up. Now again for DC United, keep in mind, if you're on this field as a player, recognizing you have this type of lead on the road, on this type of surface, don't get caught in possession. Let the ball do the work. Get the ball off your feet. It's not only the decision making in the passing, but it's the decision making with the movement off the ball to give your teammates an opportunity to find the right pass. This Waterhouse squad is unapologetic for its tough tackling in the midfield. Don't get caught with the ball at your feet. That'll be exactly what Benny Olsen said to that group at halftime. Driven by Opari. First ball one. Second ball gray. Lost it there. A foul given free kick for DC United. A good cross from Inku, assisting on the Spindola second goal. Inku popping up on this left-hand side now. A couple little chops, and he goes down, forces the referee to make the decision that's called in his favor. Free kick, Espindola. Left puts it in. One in the air, second ball coming down. Where is it? Espindola looked like he knew where it was, but look who takes off with it. Benbao still keeps it. Maybe one move too many in the middle of the field there. He was trying to get to, he lost it. Kemp for Neal. 
quarter. Right back by Opari to Franklin. Not a burn bomb. Ben Baum collected. Kemp steps up to bail out Kitchen. Neal. Got it outside. Opari. Trying to give and go. That didn't work. Turnover. Anderson. Trying to finesse that ball through. DC wins it. Incub is now on this left side of the field. Kitchen drives it. Franklin all the way upfield. Defending now against Samuels. A tug there. Maybe a second tug as well. And now Samuels. Franklin may have started it, but I thought Samuels might have been the one that got booked, if anyone did. Yeah, it's soft, it's unnecessary, and more than anything, it's just frustration. Anderson lays it off on the left, played into the box, never got there. That's driven well wide of the target, not even close. Well, for everything that was going right, JP, for Waterhouse in that 4-1 win at home against Tower FC, it's been the exact opposite tonight at home against DC United. They started off bright with a ton of confidence, looked very, very dangerous. But DC United did a very good job settling into this match, slowing things down through possession, and have made great decisions as a unit defensively. Bellamy, clearance. Ben Bao. Lost it. Waterhouse will recover, but it's back deep in their own territory. Play back to goal to McCallum. He'll slice it upfield. In Coombe. To the outside of Spindola. Could he get three tonight? Battle there with Gray. Right back by Estrada. Kemp. Back for a spindle. Push off there. Finlayson gets called for taking down Estrada. So finishing tonight by Fabian Espindola. That's really the difference in the game. Keep an eye on the matchups in the box. It'll be good quality service. An outswinger from Fabian Spindola on this near side. In front, that's headed away. Kitchen, first man to it for DC United. On the cut, Kitchen drives it in. One header, wide of the post. Rookie Birnbaum got up there. Porter was up there as well. Well, Birnbaum's had a good night defensively. And a little clipped in ball. From the far side from Perry Kitchen. And again, you, JP, you look at the difference. You look at the difference in decision making. And again, once Waterhouse gets to the final third, they find themselves at the top of the 18 yard box. It's almost like it's kryptonite, where everything just breaks apart and goes wrong for the home side. The decisions consistently from shooting from distance, completely unnecessary. Opportunities gone wasted. Look at that ball from Espindola. The corner played inside. Estrada couldn't turn. He finds an open man. Incum shot. Deflected wide by McCallum. Corner kick. DC United. It's a pretty good performance by Incum tonight. He well, looks incredibly comfortable either at right back or at right midfield getting forward with Sean Franklin in the lineup. He'll have that freedom knowing that that right back spot's just locked down. It looked like he would have pinged the outside of the left post from that distance, but again, dangerous play. On well, the short corner whipped in. Cleared partially by Anderson and then sent out. Neal plays it over. And come in front, almost got through. Estrada was open. Well, look at the yellow shirts, JP. Eight yellow jerseys inside the 18-yard box or at the top of the 18-yard box. 
and not a single player man marked. No pressure whatsoever on the DC United service. Free kick from Waterhouse, 59th minute. DC United with a fairly comfortable lead on the road from Jamaica. A 2 0 lead over Waterhouse. Advantage call here. Waterhouse going forward, almost handled there. Villanid makes the safe play and clears. For Espindola. What a move that was against Finlayson. Forbes comes over to help. Inku. Switched over to Kemp. So pick out of Maryland a couple years back. Left sideline, Porter. Drives it toward the middle. Edge of the box. Opposite side, Incombe. Waits. Moves it back. Driven in, that's blocked. The shot from Neal. Coming back. Pare. Uh, DC's done a great job in this second half. Winning that second ball, not allowing Waterhouse to clear their lines. And once they do win the ball, they get it back on the deck and they start moving it left to right, forcing Waterhouse to chase defensively. The difference in quality really starting to shine through in the 60th minute. Looks like Damian Binns is up on the side as Porter plays it in front. Waterhouse is getting ready to go to their bench. Now we saw Binns come in for the number 45, Powell, in the... 4-1 win at home against Tower FC, like for like offensively. Franklin to the right. In coup. Back to Sean Franklin. Cal State Northridge. Finn Layson. Waterhouse keeping it on the ground. Take down there. Easy one to call on Inku. We're gonna see the substitution now. Bins for Campbell. I thought Campbell was more of a factor in that first game in Washington, D.C. than he was tonight. Didn't have as much of the ball tonight. Maybe part of that was the play of Cordell Benbow, who seemed to be more around the ball than anyone else from Waterhouse. Well, you're taking off more of a defensive-minded midfielder, and you're bringing on more of an attack-minded midfielder in Damian Benz. He'll float out to that left-hand side, look to be an overlapping player, and allow Evan Taylor to Marley Samuels to step higher into the midfield. Ben Bile, this time lost it. One of his rare, awkward touches tonight. So better than an hour gone, DC United in a very good place. Up by two goals, thanks to Fabian Espindola's finishing. His first goal was a goal of beauty. Looking maybe for a third goal tonight. This is to Estrada. Espindola trails. And the flag was up. Just watching, JP, the game management of a player like Perry Kitchen. You have to wonder how long it's going to be until Jurgen Klinsmann takes a good long look at Kitchen. Talking about that next generation, that next wave of players. And to see Perry Kitchen grow in that role, starting deep in the back of the defense for DC United, and how he's made that midfield role his, the leadership, the way he's grown as a player, both offensively and defensively. You gotta think he's gonna be one of the next young players to get that, that major look, that major breakthrough. Yeah. He's only 22 and it's his fourth year as a starter. He got him as the number three pick overall in 2011. Most observers can consider that a steal. A lot of players, a lot of scouts around the league, coaches, general managers thought he might have been the best player available. Well, I think more importantly, too, JP, is that he's growing into his body. He talked about those yeah. four years as a starter. He's got to be 6'2", 180 pounds, but you see the, the, the physical traits to have that big of a destroyer with that soft defeat sitting centrally. And the year, you know, we talk about Bill Hamid, we talk about Ben Olsen as a coach, but last year it felt like DC United were inventing ways to lose games. This year, I think all of that negativity has been turned into positivity with the additions of 
veteran leadership and a guy like Perry Kitchen, he, he's thrived. Thrived in the midfield this year for DC United. That free kick is going to be retaken. Is there going to be a sub coming too? Yes, there is. Another change being made. Javon Benjamin, 19, coming in for Evan Taylor. Well, again, like for like. Javon Benjamin had the start, played the full 90 minutes against Tauro. It was a surprise not to see him get the start tonight. Free kick. The delivery failed in the box. Finlayson stepping way up, getting the chip from Gray. Passed up a shot to play it across. Pushed to the right to Gray. Forbes toward the middle. From distance, Benjamin got it forward. On the turn, quick shot, take it low, and did Amit get a touch? He did, there's a corner coming. Just got a slight deflection on the shot from Howe. Well, it's the second time we've seen Bill Hamid come up with a huge save. We saw back-to-back -back blocks in the box in the first half. That had eyes for side net, far post. Driven from the corner, headed out. Waterhouse gets it back. From about 30 yards, that one's blocked. Shot was taken by Finlayson. Franklin up the wing. On the clearance. Waterhouse on it. From Kingston, Jamaica. They're playing in the National Stadium tonight here on Fox Sports. Home team is trailing with Brian Dunseth, JP Della Camera. 2-0 lead for DC United. Thanks to Fabian Espindola. Change the time of the goal now to the 50th minute. 38th and 50th, and Chris Pontius is getting ready to sub in for DC United. Had the hamstring problems. This will only be his second game that he's played. Played just a few minutes against the Red Bulls in their last MLS game. Sent into the box, never reached it. Porter cleared it out. Look at Spindola, the attention that he draws. Still working hard. Two goals for him, a two-goal lead. But he's playing like they're trailing. All right, he's going to have to put in a full shift tonight. With the suspension in Major League Soccer, much like we saw with Eddie Johnson a few weeks ago, Fabiana Spindola probably realistically going to play the whole game. This is a surprise for me. It's, it's a surprise in the physicality of this match to see Chris Pontius come in. But recognizing this is an opportunity to get game fitness, game sharpness for Pontius and play the better part of 24, 25 minutes. If he's healthy for the rest of the season, it's like picking up a star player at the trade deadline because he's not played at all until the very last game and he was one of their better players when healthy. Well, he, if, if he is fully fit and right. once he gets that sharpness, it's like getting a designated player because Chris Pontius has proven in this league that he is more than capable of scoring goals and being an incredibly influential player. Benjamin trying to get through. Neil blocks his path. Forbes loses to Incum. Franklin helps to move it ahead. Or they're doing what you suggested. They're trying to move it as quickly as they can, not hang on to the ball for too many touches. This is Pontius. You wonder about his career, where it may have gone. 2012 an all-star and a best 11 player in last year limited action this year like we mentioned only a few minutes eight minutes at the New York Red Bulls that's it Neil will push it back Opare chased by Samuels 68th minute DC United trying to close this one out Three big points in the road if they can get it. Two nothing lead here. In for Franklin off his chest. He tried to cut it back, or it looked like he did, to Pontius, who was open. McCallum with the distribution. Well, until DC United gets that third goal in this match, there's still going to be somewhat of a belief that Waterhouse can get back in. It's like the third or fourth time we've seen Fabian with that little scoop. Franklin does everything right. As he gets his feet set, he just mishits that service, getting it back across the top of the six. Waterhouse in yellow. 
on the ball. They made two changes. Looks like they've got another sub up. Pontius. Waterhouse back on the ball. Looks like Adoa Nickel coming in. Here's Howell. Coming through and he got clipped or didn't he? What's the call? Is it outside or inside? All right, he's making the most of it. Yes. That foul was committed outside the box. The referee right now you see the look he gave back after he was done rolling yeah <laughs> uh, you got to do everything in a situation like this and i just got done saying until dc united gets that third he, he pulls the landing gear up he goes down and he gets the three rolls in and as he turns this last time he ends up getting that look back at the referee to see what was happening and the way taylor kemp's reacting referee went to the back pocket went to the Whoa. red well well, that's the second yellow card. Yeah. Taylor Kemp got yeah. the yellow yeah. in the 22nd. Yeah. We didn't see him give the yellow initially, right? But we would have known that. Right, he's reaching for the pocket. Yeah, and one ready. would think, even without confirmation of the, the camera on it, that Taylor Kemp would be sitting on a yellow card for that type of challenge. But again, that's a challenge he has to make in that situation, recognizing that the tackle needs to be made outside the 18-yard box, as opposed to letting him get inside the 18-yard box, take the yellow card, and then referee points to the spot. Noah Nickel in for Jermaine Anderson. They are done with the subs. So they take out really their best goal scorer, but a player that really didn't have too many good looks tonight. So an important free kick here and an extra man for another 20 minutes. Or can Waterhouse make the right decision? Can they punish DC United for the mistake that was just made? Ten yards back from the wall. Most important free kick of the night for Waterhouse to this point. You've got Howell there, Gray, Forbes. Stepping out, quick shot, taking off the crossbar and in. And it's game on. You and Gray tagged that one. Not much Bill and could do even at 6'3", 225, as big as he was, to get that. Something to cheer about, finally, for the home side. All right, it's one thing to have the opportunity to pull one back in a situation like that. It's another thing to execute the way Hugh and Gray just hit that free kick. Absolutely nothing the wall nor Bill Hamid could do. Perfect placement, perfect velocity. Gets it up, comes back down, kisses the underside of the crossbar. And that is an extremely well taken free kick from Hugh and Gray. And now for DC United, things are going to get nerve wracking in these final 18 minutes, up 2 1 on the road. And down a man, Hugh and Gray, 71st minute, his first goal in this CONCACAF Champions League campaign. Now we'll see what happens. Waterhouse playing now with some energy that we hadn't seen in a while. They've got the extra man. They're within one goal. Off Greg. To the right sideline, Gray's cross, open man! Quick shot, Howell blocked. Benba goes after it. Benba at the end line. DC can't afford a mistake here. Knocked out for a corner. Well, we've seen the defensive adjustment without a substitution. Samuel Incoom has dropped back to right back. Sean Francis has slid over to the left-hand side of the defense. DC can still make a substitution if they want. Here's Gray. Fires it wide of Amid. Well, I said before, DC had a seemingly comfortable 2-0 lead. All of that obviously changes with both of those things, the goal and the man sent off. Bill Mead will take his time with this. Now you think about two players available for Ben Olsen. You've got Jared Jeffrey, who's a defensive-minded midfielder that could slot in. Or you could go with Luis Silva, who could sit in and replace or replicate what David Estrada has done. It just depends on how defensive you want to be to sit back and absorb versus 
how counterproductive it is potentially bringing in then an attacking player to get a little bit more possession, get back to what you were doing so well before that red card. So Ben Olsen and his assistant Chad Ashton must ponder. Could be a long 17 or so minutes here. And stoppage time. Well, at the very least, DC United's going to have to get a lot out of Fabiana Spindola up top. He's going to have to be a warrior by himself. Franklin now on the opposite side of the field on the left side. Up for Pontius. Oh, great cut. Tackled out. DC's ball on the throw in. Well, you see what Chris Pontius can bring to the game. Such fluidity in his movement, his decision making. Quick little Cruyff after he dips the shoulder, gets two players biting on it and then plays himself out of pressure. Taylor Kemp's yellow card is second one. Sent him off. DC playing with 10. For the back line for DC United, if you can't keep that possession, height, width, and distance. Get that ball as far away from your goal as possible if possession's not on. Ball played through on the left. Headed away by Birnbaum. A very good marking from Steve Birnbaum. Does a good job utilizing his arm strength to push off from the attacker. Clear that space, be goal side, and get a good header out of bounds. Long distance, great fingertip save by Amin. Corner, look out, Waterhouse is coming. They want to play it as quickly as they can. For another shot from distance, this time, finally, Bill Hamid is forced into a save, pushing that past the outside of the left post. Samuels. He was asking for a call. Well, how do you play it now, Dunny, if you're DC? Forget the substitution, but now you're down a man. Now the game has changed completely, and you can see the energy, the fire that Waterhouse is playing with that we haven't seen before. Yeah, you, you, you sacrifice a forward. You drop David Estrada deeper back into the midfield. Infield comes to right back. Sean Franklin over the left-hand side. You try to keep the game in front of you as much as possible, but a lot of that comes down to the midfield from DC United and Fabiana Spindola back pressing but applying immediate pressure because Waterhouse right now this isn't about keeping possession this is about going north to south this is about putting DC United in the most uncomfortable situations defensively they possibly can there's Pontius cutting tackled away from him saw the 25 fouls so far almost even there and three cards given out Again, you see the experience. You ask me what Chris Pontius means to DC United coming back at this stage of the season. The decision-making that he just had in that last play, earning himself a corner, and then immediately turning around and telling everyone to settle down. That type of experience is invaluable at this point of the year. Pontius will drive it. It bounces, and corner kick is conceded. 78th minute. Again, six guys in the box and not a single Waterhouse defender is attacking the ball. Benz is really hung out to dry right there. He wants Edwards to attack the ball and clear it. Benz just caught recovering. He's fortunate he didn't push that into his own goal. Speed the lot. Floats it up. When it's grabbed by McCallum. Estrada was somewhat open. McCallum gets it upfield. Momentum has certainly changed thanks to the goal by Hewan Gray. Came in the 71st minute on a free kick, well struck. I'm really interested to see JP how the referee paces this game with his whistle as these final minutes start closing down because the pressure. It's not just on the players, just not, not on the home side, but also on the referee and see how loose or how tight he becomes with his calls. Espindola for Pontius. Pontius is so calm out there. They've played it back to keep possession. Now it's given away as they say that. Waterhouse picks it up. Halfway line area. 
Moving it ahead. Ben Bao. Nice soft pass ahead. Pushed wide by Howell. Samuels cross. Headed down wide. Another opportunity, though, was there. So I got to agree with the reaction of Bill Amid right there. You don't want to see 3v3 defending across your back line at this stage of the game. 79 minutes in, down a man because of a red card. You should not be caught defensively 3v3 in the back. Too much risk. At this point, it's recovery. But again, having an attack player right there, you can see Inkum saying he wants Birnbaum to press out immediately, apply better pressure on the service. Fatigue setting in, decision-making has to be at its best for the visitors. Waterhouse on the ball. Struck well wide of Bill Amin. DC won't mind that. Again, really like the conversations from Bill Hamid right now. Positive information in front of him. Not harping on his defenders, telling him exactly what he wants, what exactly what needs to be better. And every single time you see that motion, JP, he's telling him, I, I, I need better pressure on the ball. I need you guys to step up. 80th minute, DC up a goal, down a man. Gray across the way, bins, tap back. It's a nice ball as it turns out. Floated into the box. Brought down Samuels. Can he get a shot off? He'll play it back for Gray. Cutting through. Forbes put it over. But they're finding those seams now against 10 man DC United. Well, if Waterhouse at a very minimum does not level this scoreline, it comes down with their inability to keep their shots on frame. Once again, great positioning. Waterhouse finds himself in a dangerous spot and they can't force Bill Hamid to make the save. You surprised at all that Ben Olsen hasn't gone to the bench? I, I'm, I'm not, I, I'm not. I, I think right now the best part of making that substitution of halftime, bringing in Sean Franklin, affords him the opportunity to play on that right-hand side with two defenders before the right part. But Dempsey earning his money in extra time, 101st minute. Seattle Sounders trying to win their fourth Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup since they joined Major League Soccer in, what, five years? All right, JP, that could change everything in the Western Conference. Yeah. Once they qualify for CONCACAF Champions League, how does that affect their mindset? Especially knowing they're at New York, at FC Dallas, and then home and away against yeah. the LA Galaxy. Fourth time, I guess, in six years. Here's Gray playing it back, headed over Amid. When you look at their shots, they're just not getting them on frame. But they've had open looks. A strong run in behind. I love to see Fabiana Spindola tracking defensively. He's put in a hard shift tonight after scoring two goals. But again, I, I said in the first half, and I'll say it again until the, the final whistle. Until Waterhouse starts keeping their shots, their opportunities offensively on frame, they're completely wasted chances because they found themselves in some great, great positions they haven't been able to capitalize. Awkward header back by Bins, but recovered by Waterhouse in the yellow with blue trim here they come 83rd minute they were down and out two nothing down the gray free kick goal gave them life playing up against the DC United side down to 10 men now since the 70th minute mark bins on the ball for Waterhouse Ben Bow launches it from the halfway line it was Opari backpedaling and won it in the air. Uh, JP, I think head coach Anthony Patrick has done a disservice to this man with the substitutions he's made. He's dropped Ben Bow deeper and deeper where he has not been nearly as influential as what we saw before those substitutions. Forbes. Benjamin. Finlayson. 
He could go from there. Shot low. That time, Amid held on to it. But at least it was on frame and could have produced a rebound. But Amid was right there to smother it. That's a good save from Bill Hamid. More importantly, good positioning from DC United's back line, turning, recovering, and following up shots. DC United is going to have to be perfect until the final whistle to hold on to this scoreline. Played in. 18 yards out. Now in off the foot of Gray. Had he settled that ball, he had a great chance to score. Gray will drive it across. It'll be settled. Benjamin Finlayson. Surprised everyone with that pass, but it was off target. Cleared away by Inku. Well, eight players from Waterhouse committed to the top of the 18-yard box. And I think now's the time where Ben Olsen's going to go to the bench and bring in Bobby Boswell. His veteran center back looked to help to close this game out. Too many holes starting to open up in the 18. Finn Layson on the ground to Gray. Franklin chases the cross. It's a wild one. Estrada's able to get it and just clear it out. Long for Spindola, 1v1. Try to cut inside, a terrific defensive play. Otherwise, if Spindola could have gone in to try to get his third goal. Uh, Upstate Edwards, very, very fortunate that Fabi cut that ball so hard. He was fully committed. Risk versus reward, he risked everything. And he was fortunate that ball ended up in his chest. Here's the substitution. Take out a forward, Estrada, bring in a central defender, the experienced Bobby Boswell. Big, strong, good in the air. All the things that could be helpful in the next five minutes. Just his calmness in the back there as well. He's going to be hard tonight. He did, he did. And I think he's got a positive game. It's going to be a lot of adjustment across the back line right now. As Bobby Boswell comes in, he's going to be playing in his preferred center back spot. Looks like Kofi Opare is going to push over a little bit. Wouldn't be surprised to see Berenbaum slide over to right back in Coom sit in front of him. Done with the subs. As Gray plays it back. See how much stoppage time is going to be put up soon. Right now, it's the 87th minute. Gray. Benba. Looks. Floats it up. I mean, off his line. Grabs it. He comes out with confidence. Upfield on the bounce. Espindola trying to get by. Look at that fight from Espindola. Held, held, and held again. And he almost broke free. Well, I'm actually surprised that whistle was called because. To see that whistle blown with that much fight determination from both sides, you could have called the foul on either of them, and it would have been a respectable call. But again, game management. Game management for DC United right now with just over three minutes remaining. Hamid clears it. And the Spindle took that one for the team. I right, just swung out. Upson Edwards just swung out. And if we can see it from our angle, you would think the referee could see that right arm come back into the face. And that's exactly what Lewis Neal's saying. There's, there's a forearm yep. in that right, that right arm coming back. You just can't do that. You know, as a defender in a situation like that, even if you take a hit from behind, he's very, very fortunate not to be sitting on a yellow card. Actually, both players not picking up a yellow card, very fortunate. As you take for granted, you watch a spindle so much, but the work rate tonight, up there, pretty much on his own, almost 90 minutes. He will get 90 tonight. They've already used their subs, but every ball that he's contested for, and he's worked hard defensively, too. Well, he's been that way since he's come to Major League Soccer, yeah. uh, and, and I think with Fabian, the one thing that's always been there, and that, that, that fight, that grit, that determination, is there's a personal pride in Fabian, and knowing him off the field, He's a sweetheart. The moment he crosses those white lines, there's something that changes in his eyes where that competition, me versus you, and I'm going to win no matter what. I, I think that's what makes him an, an exceptional player in this league. When he got to a final with Real Salt Lake in this competition, losing to Monterey. He'd love to get another chance at him. 
And I think that, that still haunts him. That tournament with Real Salt Lake haunts him because he had a great opportunity at home against Monterey to put the ball in the back of the net and he pushed the ball just wide. And all Real Salt Lake needed was a win or a draw just to keep the zero. And that cost was a, or that miss was a costly, costly miss. And something so much that haunted him that he didn't even travel at the weekend on the road to the Portland Timbers afterwards. I remember that. So he, ta he takes this he takes this tournament personally. Here is Fabian Espindola. Two goals, looking for a third. Tough angle though. Still has it, keeps it, plays it back. Settled by Pontius. He knows they don't need another goal. They need to take time off the clock. That's why he plays it back to Neil. Neil's on the chase. Tackled it away. Samuels with time running out. We'll see about stoppage time soon. 90th minute. DC United looking at three points at the moment. Played in, blocked by Boswell. Incum cleared it, not far enough out. Ben Bao, low center of gravity plus that speed. Tough to mark him. Gathered in on the right side by Kitchen, who clears. Spindler was rocked again. It didn't look like going for the ball. Well, Finlayson, he's making no attempt for the ball. He's looking to get a piece and absolutely a yellow card. When we talked about at this stage, DC United players need to be careful about getting lined up right there. Finlayson, he was going in with the intent to make sure he got a piece of Fabiano Spindola. Well, when all is said and done, free kick for DC United. We're in stoppage time. He's got no idea that Finlayson's coming and both players are very fortunate that there wasn't a face-to-face -face collision with that challenge. Two big goals for that man tonight. Fourth yellow card of the night. It's just issued to Finlayson. Offside flag up on Espindola. Nearly a minute gone in stoppage time. Waterhouse knows they're up against the clock here. Down a goal, up a man. DC fighting hard to the very end. To get those three points on the road. Forbes up the middle. Benba. Gray, the return. Benba in line, cuts it back, knocked away by Boswell. Gray picks it up, good hustle. Short pass, edge of the box. Forbes drives it in, contests the ball in the air, comes back out. Samuels against Kitchen. Neil will take off with it. Second minute of stoppage time. Driven towards the corner flag. Spindler tried to cut inside. That time it looked like he tried to draw the foul. No sympathy there from the match referee, Skeet. Third minute of stoppage time. Howell leaves it off. From distance, played forward to Benjamin. Gray, shifting, round kitchen, low shot, stopped as a rebound, and cleared away by Boswell. Amid Denton, most of that shot, so it wasn't a real juicy rebound, but it was a good thing for DC, Boswell was there. Still a 2-1 lead for DC United with time running out. Finlayson, wide, Ben Bowes, cross. Settled by Benjamin in the box, now outside of it. Dropping it back, Forbes, cracked high and wide to the left of Amid. Another decent opportunity, but off frame by Bins. But again, uh, the decision-making, JP, it, it, it's got to be it's got to be so frustrating for the coaching staff of Waterhouse to see how many times this group is electing to pull the trigger from the distances that they find themselves in. When all it really needs is just a little clipped in ball back into a danger spot by the penalty spot. You can create so much more havoc. 
That's going to be the difference tonight. Waterhouse created some great opportunities and should have kept advantage of the fact that they were a man up for more than 20.